Hi. In this video, I'm going to show a quick overview of how to deploy and debug managed projects that are part of the Dynamics AX. So here I have Visual Studio open and I have the Visual Studio tools for Dynamics AX installed. I created myself a managed project with a managed class that just has a managed method that returns hello world. Uh, I've taken this project and I've added it to Dynamics AX to get some of the benefits like the deploy and the debug. So the way I've done this is that I've on the project itself used the add, uh, in this case my managed code, to AOT. And this option you get when you have the Visual Studio tools for Dynamics AX installed. Um, once I've executed this command, it has taken the project and stored it in the AOT. The uh, project icon has changed with a little Dynamics uh, sales icon overlay to indicate that this is part of the AOT. And we can see that the project is also uh, now appearing in the relevant Visual Studio project node in the App Explorer. And likewise, you'll actually see this in the AOT in Morphex. Now, adding this to the AOT um, will actually give you a couple of uh, Microsoft Dynamics AX specific project properties. And these properties control both the debugging and the deployment. I'll get into the debugging in a moment. Let's start by looking at the deployment properties. So the options that you have is to deploy to the client or to the server or to EP. And EP actually has two options. You can decide whether you just want any proxies that are part of the managed project to be um, deployed to EP. That's typically a scenario if you have a, an EP web control that needs to access AX uh, types, you would reference a managed project that contains proxies for those types. And then you want to deploy those proxies to EP as well. But you can also choose actually to deploy the compiled uh, assembly to the uh, EP side as well, if you choose yes. So what I want to do now is that I want from X++ use the X++ interrupt capabilities to call into this manage class. Uh, later, I actually want to use that to, uh, to debug the manage code as well. So let's open um, the AX development workspace. Uh, I created a job and the job uh, really just instantiates uh, this managed class from AX um, X++ code and then it calls my method and takes that output and displays it in the info log. So I have my managed uh, code um, call here. Let's just have a look at the code. Instantiating a class C and then I'm calling my managed method on that and displace it in the info log. So if I call it now, this will actually not work. And the reason it's not gonna work is because I didn't deploy anything. And I can try and, and call it here and we'll see there's no, no code, runnable code because it doesn't compile because it cannot find this uh, actual uh, managed code. So in the past, what I would have to do would be that I would have to go into the references node and add my assembly that I build and then I could use it from within my code. But that's not what we're going to do here. We're going to leverage the capabilities that you get from adding your managed uh, code to the AOT. So let me close uh, the uh, environment again. And, and now I'm going to go into my managed project and I'm going to set uh, my deploy to client to yes because I want to be able to run this managed code from my job on the client. So having set it to yes, I'm going to build it. So I get an updated uh, DLL in my AUT and updated project properties that can be used for deployment. Now, whenever I deploy, the DLLs will actually end up as part of my local user under the, um, the uh, VS assemblies folder for the app data for Dynamics AX. So let me just uh, delete all of these so we can see what, what happens. So I'm now going to start my AX client. Yes. 
and I'm going to recompile my my job. So what that actually did was that it triggered a demand uh, fetching of all the DLLs known in the AOT. And even though I didn't add a, an explicit reference in the AOT to my managed code, it actually ended up being loaded as well because it's been marked to be deployed on the client. Um, so let me uh, go ahead now and try run this job. We see that it will display hello world. So let me go back to Visual Studio and let me just uh, update this string. Like this, and I'll redeploy. Okay, now if I go back to the client and I do run, then it will actually run, as we can see, on the old DLL. That's because uh, the info log, uh, sorry, the, the um, client does not support um, hot swapping of DLLs. So what I need to do is that I need to uh, close down the, the client and preferably do that before I actually go and do a rebuild. But let's uh, open the client again. And let's rerun the, the job. And now we see that I'm running on my latest changes where I added the managed part of this string. Okay, let's uh, have a look at the debug capabilities. Before going into the debug, let me actually just elaborate a little bit on the hot swapping as well. So I mentioned the hot swapping on the client and we don't have that, but we actually do have it on the server side. Now, you normally don't deploy um, DLLs to a an AOS in a, in a production environment, but uh, you sometimes want to do that if you're running uh, an AOS in a developer environment and you, you have a problem restarting the AOS if you're running with a shared AOS. So one of the new features in this release is that you can actually set up for your AOS that you allow hot swapping of DLLs. And what that means is that you can replace DLLs on the server such that uh, any current session sessions will run on the old version of the DLL, but any new sessions on the AOS will actually use the new deployed uh, DLL. And and the way you control that is that you use your your server configuration. And in the server configuration, there's a um, there's a an option to enable the hot swapping of assemblies for each development session. So that's what you want to utilize if you are running a an AOS and you don't want to either um, restart it or you're sharing it as, uh, as part of a, a shared AOS setup. So let's go back to the to the debugging. I want to actually uh, debug this code so that when it's called from, from my, um, my, uh, my X++ code, I want to have a breakpoint before we actually return this string. So I'm going to start by setting a breakpoint here. Now, if I go back to my project, I, I have two uh, debug-specific properties. The first one is a debug target. And what this is, is a list of the possible processes that we will auto-attach to when you press F5 from within Manage Code. So F5 here is run. So um, the options here is that you can, you can get uh, Visual Studio to automatically attach to the AX32 client session or the... Um, AX32 serve server session or the SSRS reporting uh, service if you have that installed on, on your machine. And the latter gives you the ability to debug any managed code that you have that, um, that implements some managed reporting business logic and you want to debug that. But in this case, I want to actually debug on my client. So I'm going to select client here. Now, the last option that I have is that when I'm running um, F5 on my managed code and it automatically attaches to my, my uh, target, I can actually have it also start something in AX. So, so this could be a job. It could be a form. For example, if you want to add, if you have a button or something like that on a form and that button 
uh, when you click it, it will uh, run some managed code. Then you you can have that form start up when you start up your managed code um, uh, debug session, and then you can click that button and it will actually execute the, the, the managed code. So in this case, I made a, a job, as you might remember. So I'm going to go and, and find that job in my App Explorer. And I'm just going to refresh this. And I have my call managed code. And I'm going to right click that and say set a startup element. And you will see that it will have provided now my startup element. And you can, you can uh, provide this yourself. Uh, by, by writing this, but it's just easier to use uh, the uh, the um, fast option on the context menu over here. So now we are actually set up. So uh, let me just uh, go here and click F5. And so F5 now will will handle the uh, instantiation of the AX client here. It will start up my job. And so now it started up my job. Uh, you won't really see that because as soon as we start up the job, it calls into the uh, managed code. And I set my breakpoint here on hello managed world. And you can see that my breakpoint now stopped on that line. I can do all of my managed um, debugging in this environment. And let's just uh, continue. And then uh, I expect the info log to appear with this string. So let's just say continue. And we actually see that we end up with the uh, info log message. So that, that showed how to go and debug the managed code called from, from X++. And you could actually imagine a, a more complicated scenario in this where you, from, man, from X++, call into managed code. And you could theoretically have that managed code also called back into X++ through proxies to, to, get, to, to get some more information. And you can debug that. Um, um, interaction uh, by having both a Visual Studio debugger for the managed code and the X++ debugger for the X++ code. Okay, so that uh, concludes this video. Uh, thank you.